Lightning is a truly magnificent phenomena. But have you ever wondered why a lot of people are being so scared when they see lightning or electricity near them? Clearly it's due to the fact that they are not ready to comprehend its nature, not having what it takes to embrace the force of such a magnificent power. Only the chosen one will be able to grasp the way of lightning. And for those people, I, together with my trustworthy friend Zeus on the Loose, are ready to bring you a new episode of Grim Dawn Build Overview. This time around we are going to overview two-handed melee weapon lightning warder build. As usual, the process of a build overview will be done using the following steps. Skills. Devotions. Gear. Stats. Gameplay, Performance Showcase, Conclusion. Starting our overview with the main class, which is Shaman. Primal Strike is our main source of damage for this lightning build. This is why we are going to max the skill itself as well as its modifiers. Don't forget to grab Thunderous Strike. It will allow you to start spamming Primal Strike, as long as you'll be wearing a two-handed weapon. We are also going to use Savagery as a way to acquire bonuses from Might of the Bear, Tenacity of the Boar and Storm Touched. In order to get the full extent of those bonuses, you have to maintain Savagery at 5 or 6 stacks. Stormcaller's Pact is going to be your one and only choice for an ultimate ability in this build, because it gives a massive boost to lightning, electrocute and crit damage, adds conversion from physical to lightning, as well as reduce stun duration. Wind Devils are used to shred enemies' elemental resistances via its modifier Raging Tempest. Brute Force adds flat lightning damage, physical damage and health. Dragon's Pact and its modifiers will serve as a source of much-needed defensive stats, such as resistances, armor, health, etc. One point into Vendigo Totem to unlock Blood Pact that will give us more lifesteal. One point into Storm Totem. This skill will be used as a way to proc one of our devotions. Moving on to the Soldier. Fighting Spirit as a source of damage boost that procs when your character is being hit. Military conditioning will increase in a percent based our physique and health. One point into Minir's Will, going to restore us a bit of health if it drops below 33%. One point into Blitz, just to get access to our movement ability. Field Command and Squad Tactics provide us both with a huge damage boost as well as a boost to defense. Scars of Battle is used to reduce freeze and stun duration, add some more bleeding resist and slap on some armor absorption for extra survivability. Now let's take a look at our Devotion setup. As secondary Devotions we use Toad, Spider, Eel, Viper and Sailor's Guide. Since we are going to be using a two-handed weapon, must-have Devotion for this build is going to be Kraken. As our main devotions we are going to use the following. Ghoul to provide extra survivability. We acquire some additional resistant reduction from Rowan's Crown with its Elemental Storm, Ultas with the Hand of Ultas, as well as Widow with Arcane Bomb. Profile damage is being boosted by Spear of Heavens, Widow, Rowan's Crown, as well as Ultas. Now we are going to take a look at our gear. The core concept of this build is going to revolve around 5-piece Ultas set. Acquiring all bonuses that you see on the screen is a must, as all of those stats and a plus 2 to Shaman skill tree is going to be impossible to ignore. Ultas X with Seal of Blades component that gives you lifesteal 
and an aura that will increase your armor and pierce resistance, and potent Malnut's heart as an augment. Mythical Ulta's Hood, Prismatic Diamond, and Trig's Fiend Blood. Mythical Ulta's Gem with the Seal of Annihilation and Sky Shard Powder. Mythical Ulta's Kiras with Sanctified Bone and Drake's Fiend Blood. Mythical Ulta's Spalders with Living Armor and King's Guard Powder. Mythical Rune Singed Hangards with Restless Remains and Mankind's Vigil gives us a little bit of both offense and defense. Feral Mane Leg Plates with Ancient Armor Plate and Magdragon's Touch boost our profile damage, defensive ability, and adds a consistent proc effect. Mythical Storm Shepherd with Uptonbach Leather and Kingsguard Powder. Plus one to all shaman skills and an additional offense boost. Mythical Storm Titan Treads with Uptonbach Leather and Kingsguard Powder. It's a strong and consistent proc effect, some additional stun resistance, and even more offense and health. Mark of the Farseer with Arcane Spark and Rune of Ra'an's Might. Powerhouse medal that is going to make your life much, much easier. Rune of Ra'an's Might will add a second movement ability in form of a point and click charge. Eye of the Storm is going to be our choice for Relic, due to how much bonuses to lightning damage, shaman skills, and attack speed it can provide. I specifically left the ring part for the last, and here is the reason why. In an ideal world you want to use two legendary rings of Anubar with Bloody Eat Crystal and Sky Shard Powder, as they are the best in slot options for this build. However, it is extremely frustrating to farm them due to how abysmally low the drop rate of those rings is. I've spent it nearly 60 plus runs into the Tomb of Heretic, which is the Tomb of Morganet dungeon, and haven't managed to get a single one of those two rings. That is why, in my version of the build, I will be using two alternatives. Mythical Sign of Astral Rumination and Coven Storm Seal. I will repeat again, if you are lucky enough to get the two legendary rings of Anubar, use them. They will make this build much stronger. Time to look at how we distribute our stat points. Put all of your 107 points into Physique. You can neglect Cunning and Spirit. For a more detailed picture of this build, I will leave a Green Tools link in the video description. It's about time to talk some more about general gameplay and tips. Lightning Warder is a very simple class when it comes to how you control him in combat. He is not using that many skills and you don't have to worry too much about timings. Before the fight begins, cast Wind Devil, then use Blitz to charge into your foes. Throw Vendigo Totem as well as Lightning Totem near you. Stack that Savagery ability to the maximum of 6 stacks by hitting enemies with this ability 6 times. After getting all 6 stacks of Savagery, you can transition to unleashing all of your Primal Strike power on those fools who dare to oppose the Way of Lightning. Make sure to keep track of your totems, Wind Devils as well as Savagery stacks. Ideally, you want to always have a Healing Totem, 2 Lightning Totems, 2 Wind Devils, and 5-6 Savagery stacks. Both of your mobility skills, such as Blitz and Ron's Might, should help you with your repositioning, dodging nasty skills, as well as movement around the map. While repositioning, recast your totems, especially Vendigo Totem, because you don't want to lose that 6% lifesteal bonus. Now that we have taken a look at skills, devotions, items, stats, as well as covered some general gameplay tips, I think that it's about time to show you how this bad boy performs in high-end content of Grim Dawn.
As much as I like Lightning Element and Primal Strike visual effects in Green Dawn, it's hard for me to deny that this build is definitely not going to be suited for everyone, especially for beginners. You might be asking, but why? It doesn't utilize that many skills. It's fun to play, while leveling you get a lot of awesome gear for lightning, and this build performs quite solid in the late game. Grimdon has many layers of defense, but unfortunately, only two of those layers are going to completely outclass the others. I'm talking about damage absorption and damage immunity. Sadly, this build has neither of them. Instead, it will rely on its massive offensive ability, tons of damage, lifesteal and 100% armor absorption, which works only against physical attacks. This would be good and all if in the late game you weren't pummeled up by every type of damage that exists, including physical. That is why you will be losing your health with the speed of light. However, despite all of the negatives, I still think that you should try this one up. If you enjoy a melee-oriented build that has some amazing special effects, tons of additional proccing abilities on devotions and gear, massive aerial effect damage, and a playstyle that can be described as high risk, high reward, then this build is exactly what you're looking for. Thanks everyone for watching. If you enjoyed this episode of Green Tone Build Overview, give it a like, share with your friends, as well as subscribe to our Mighty Broski YouTube channel. Additionally, you can also follow us on our social media accounts, visit our Twitch channel where we stream various different games, consider supporting us on Patreon and you will receive various different bonuses. All of the links are provided in the description. See you all in the next video!